Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivis. I am the Carb Addiction Doc, and today we're going to address a very, very controversial topic. <laughs> it's called dairy, dairy products. Oh my God, dairy is so bad for you. Oh, I can't eat dairy. Oh, dairy is the best thing. Uh, let's break this down from a factual position and give the pros and the cons of dairy. So let's look at the pro side first, and then we'll juxtapose it to the con side. Mammals do not exist. Mammals cannot exist without dairy. It's that simple. Dairy is vital, either as milk itself from that species or as a replacement. The only human beings that use the replacement, uh, the only mammals that use the replacement are human beings in some form of concocted formula. And the sad part about formula as a byproduct is that humans think they're better than God in nature by saying, oh, no, no, there's too much fat in dairy and there's not enough of I've got other talks on that. Dairy is vital to all mammalian species, period. There's a lot of crossover, but there's a lot of differences. And in fact, what's interesting about humans is one of the closest commercially available dairy products that humans, babies, can tolerate is goat's milk. Better than, better than cow's milk, goat and sheep milk. However, why is dairy uh, important? Well, dairy contains all the macro and micronutrient value items for mammalian life. So if all a person did was drink milk as a young person, which babies do, they would be absolutely fine and healthy in terms of survival. Adequate fat in the right ranges, adequate micronutrients, adequate trace elements, adequate vitamins, adequate protein, in exactly the right species proportion for that species. So dairy is your single best, most comprehensive food for a growing baby or child. And what's interesting about the animal kingdom is that most mammals will raise their young up to 50% of their adult size with dairy as the primary uh, uh, nutrition for source as they transition to whatever food they eat, be it plants or animals. So dairy is vital to early survival. And we don't lose that capacity. We lose it over time. What happens is if we don't consume dairy, if we don't consume dairy over time, especially lactase, which is the enzyme that breaks down the particular sugar in milk called lactose, which is a combination of glucose and, and galactose, lactose sits right at the tip of a villus. And, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it. So if you're not using dairy for a long period of time as an adult, that enzyme goes away. So now you have a glass of milk and of course your gut's going to feel to, oh, no, I'm allergic, I'm allergic to dairy. No, you're not allergic. You just don't have the enzymes to break it down. You've got to re-recruit them. And it takes a few months to re-recruit them. So if you haven't had dairy in a long time and you want to reintroduce dairy to your diet as a healthy macronutrient, as a healthy micronutrient, trace elements, vitamins, minerals, whether you do it in conjunction with others like uh, whole milk or, or cream in your coffee or cream in your, in your scrambled eggs or I use it for my omelets, um, start slowly. Recruit those lactase enzymes. Otherwise, you're going, to involve, uh, 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 you're going to overwhelm the system. You're going to feel like crap and you're going to blame the dairy. You can recruit those lactase enzymes. And lactose deficiency is as rare as rocking horse manure. In fact, I have more hen's teeth in my hen's tooth collection than there are people with true lactose deficiency. Now, it's a little bit of an overstatement, of course. Um, because I have a pretty big hen's tooth collection. <laughs> I mean, silly. Um, the point is, folks, that we overassign harm to lactose uh, allergy because of a deficiency of lactase enzyme by recruitment, not by production. It's not a genetic defect. It's a presence defect. So um, you can recruit that. However, the other... Uh, um, so the benefit of milk is to raise your kids, raise the young ones, and it should be whole milk or full cream milk. The benefit of dairy for adults is the micronutrient value. Huge, 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 huge micronutrient value. 
minerals, vitamins, trace elements in the right proportion. And remember, it's a team sport. Nutrition is a team sport. So those things all get absorbed together. And how do we condense that? We can condense that in things like butter. It's just churn milk. We, and everybody says, oh, butter is so good, but dairy is terrible. <laughs> I've never understood that one. I've never. Oh, I put butter in my coffee. Oh, but milk's so terrible for you. You can't put milk in your coffee. Ever churned butter? If you're human and you haven't churned butter, time to become a little bit more human. Go visit a farmer. Go and learn to churn butter. And you'll see what it's about. Cheese. Cheese is an excellent form of dairy. Yogurt, non-American yogurt, excellent. Yogurt in America has had all the fat removed and sugar added. But where I come from in South Africa, double cream yogurt, excellent. Sour cream, sour milk. Plenty of places. Nelson Mandela, huge, huge mentor and, and icon for me. When he was in prison, he'd take a gallon box of milk that they'd give him, put it in the sunlight for a couple of days, and allow the milk to go sour. And sour milk is a very common, wonderful treat in our African population in South Africa. Oh, it's a, hey, you know what? Don't knock it until you've tried it. So the point is, dairy products have enormous micro and macronutrient value. If you're an obese person trying to get better, the sugar, the, the sugar content in that milk may flip you into the wrong direction. And drinking your calories is not a good idea when you're trying to lose weight. So I don't advocate for it for people in the early therapeutic phase of a ketogenic diet where they're using a low-carb, high-fat diet to correct disease. Stay away from milk itself. A little bit of heavy cream in your coffee, a little bit of heavy cream in your eggs, absolutely fine to fatten those up to suppress appetite. Eating some cheese, absolutely fine. But under those conditions, it may cause problems with weight loss. It may slow down your weight loss because it's too easy to consume. And if cheese is something you snack on, that can be a problem. But that's not cheese's fault. Cheese didn't suddenly leap in your mouth while you were asleep. Because if you're that fat, your CPAP probably prevented the cheese from getting in there. No, just kidding. But cheese doesn't leap into your mouth. So it's not about cheese. It's about how you handle it. It's about your relationship with it. And if you're doing drive-bys all the time, if you've just had dinner and now five minutes later, you've got a pile of cheese that you're eating and you think it's better than the chocolates or the ice cream or the chips, it isn't. It's still a snack, and a snack is always an emotion event. But dairy has enormous micronutrient and macronutrient value. The allergy of dairy, if you're going to have one, it's typically to the protein in the dairy. The casein proteins, that's usually where the allergy is, and that can be tested for. But all because you test positive for it, it doesn't necessarily mean you have a clinically obvious allergy. Eat some cheese, do some dairy, and if it has an awful result, stop doing it and see if that gets better. Do the experiment on yourself. And do the experiment multiple times over the course of several years. Because as, as you go on a ketogenic diet, um, your ability to tolerate dairy, cheese especially, will improve. And it has huge asset value from a nutritional perspective. Now, if you're stranded in weight loss, if you're trying to lose weight, Get rid of the dairy. It's a great way to eliminate a dominant source of calories. So going dairy-free for a little while is a great way to drop weight. But if you think about this, if you think about this, I've got a lot of patients who've tried, and I love my friend Ken Berry, and it's a great idea to try. If you're stranded in weight, you're trying to go through the eye of the needle. It's something I use a lot. B-B-B-E. Beef, bacon, butter, eggs. Oh, you mustn't do dairy. What the hell is butter? What the hell is butter? Oh, dairy is so bad for you. Eh, butter. Okay? Butter is advocated for by so many people in the ketogenic space that demonize dairy. I also use dairy, liquid dairy, for people who don't have a weight problem but are insulin suppressed. You've heard me talk about insulin suppression before. When you are so fat adapted that you don't even mount an insulin response, and insulin is a vital hormone for non-energy dynamics. Insulin is a primary growth hormone. 
along with human growth hormone, insulin, human growth hormone and, and uh, fat, uh, uh, T3, thyroid hormone, are the essential growth hormones. So if you're insulin suppressed, if you're so insulin sensitive and so fat adapted and on some carnivore diet that you're not triggering insulin, you are in a state of catabolism, breaking down tissue, not forming new tissue, not growing. And that is not a healthy state to be in. You want to cycle between the two. And if you're not cycling, it may be because insulin is suppressed. Well, a great way, a great way if you're slightly underweight or to trigger insulin is to drink a glass of milk a day. Work up to it. Start with a small amount and work up to it. But the amount of carbohydrate protected by high fat is an excellent source of calories to maintain weight, to even build weight, to give you that insulin bump. In fact, my son, he's 19 months old right now. He's a 95% carnivore. He's been carnivore since, actually since before, the sperm and the ovum met. So he's, be he's been a carnivore since before he was alive. Think about that. And his whole life, he's never been out of ketosis. But twice a day, he drinks a bottle of whole milk with some heavy cream in it because you have to reconstitute milk the way God and a cow made it in this country. Elsewhere, it's, it's full cream milk. But he gets a, a, a bottle of milk every day. In the morning, he gets his fish oil in it. In the evening, it's just a bottle of milk. Why? To trigger an insulin response because he's a growing child. And right now, he's in the 92nd percentile for for height, 95th percentile for weight, but he's muscular and well-developed because he drinks milk and he's a baby. I wish his mom could, could have produced milk. She is devastated that she couldn't. But he's old enough now that cow's milk is fine. So use it for that anabolic growth spurt. Use it to trigger insulin. Don't demonize it. Don't demonize it. There are times when getting rid of dairy is very valuable. But don't demonize it. Don't be in the camp of so bad or so good. Allow yourself to fluctuate. And one other thing about cheese, folks. When I have to use a crowbar to go to the bathroom, when I've got to pry that poop out because I'm so constipated, I know that's an ugly visual, that's usually cheese. That's usually cheese. So it's a reasonable thing to go off cheese for a few days, for a few weeks, to allow bowel function to improve. Cheese will constipate you. Cheese will constipate you. But it's not a reason to avoid it. In fact, if you've got some diarrhea and that kind of thing, cheese is actually a decent way to rebuild that. And the bacteria and the funguses and the viruses that come with cheese, especially hard cheese and old cheese, excellent way to repopulate the gut, to get rid of this thing called SIBO, or bacterial overgrowth in the intestine, it's a better way to repopulate the gut. So there are tremendous benefits to, to dairy. There are no liabilities to being off dairy. But from time to time to reduce or not consume it, absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. Don't demonize it, folks. Please leave your comments down below. I know this is a hot topic. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. And if you've been off dairy for a long time, introduce a little bit, maybe some sour cream, maybe some butter, maybe some cheese. Reintroduce it and do the experiment. It has huge value, micro macronutrient. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. I hope this helps. Please leave comments in the comment section. I'll get to them, good or bad. Tell me about your experience. Hit the like button, hit the dislike button, subscribe to this channel. It helps us to bring you more content for free. Till next time.